with Jacques Tiempon and his better half, Fiona Morrison, MW, remember the MW. Um, we're going to do a little introduction this time. So the, the chateau we're going to talk about today, I was thinking, when did I first taste it? And I first tasted Le Pan when it was part of Wine Magazine's Right Bank Blind Tasting. And I, this is in the late 90s. And I remember it was in 1996. And uh, I had only been in the industry two or three years. And I remember we had Tesco's Santimillion's Finest. <laughs> and then also we had Petrus, Cheval Blanc and Le Pan Blind in, in a lineup for a magazine. So that was just in 1999. And that was the first time I ever had, ever had Le Pan. And then after that, I became quite mystified by Le Pan. I'd never been there. And so every time I went to Prima, I wanted to find it and find out more about it. And I've got a copy here. I used to go with this book, which uh, has some lovely maps in it. But the only thing with this book is, is that Le Pan is in the wrong place. And so I spent hours and hours trying to look for Le Pan and we, we could never find it because, and I'll ask you later, Jacques, but apparently it was put in the wrong place on purpose so that people wouldn't keep turning up to the door. And that included me for quite a few, a few years because I could never find it because it was so small. And then eventually we did find it and I did go there and it's since become, I'm very lucky, it's the only Bordeaux Chateau where I think I've tasted everything. And when I looked at my tasting notes, there was only one vintage that I've never tasted in bottle. And it's the bottle that I'm gonna drink during this interview that Fiona very kindly on Saturday said I would send me. And thanks to somebody in Pomerol, so shout out to Ben for Ben Browett for bringing the bottle back over the weekend. We managed to get it back to Guildford so I could actually taste it. And we're both gonna be tasting the same wine. So like usual, if anyone has questions, please ask them at the beginning of this interview so that I can try and put them in. And just a big hello to Jacques and Fiona after all that. Hello, hello. Hi everybody, Thanks. lovely to be here. And where, where are you at the moment? Well, for the moment we are in uh, Etikov, in a little village in the Flemish Ardennes. And it's near Oudenaar, well known in the English history. In you know. ah. Yes, Oudenaar, Blenheim, Marplaquet and Rumilly. You should know the history. <laughs> Rome, they say. So, and have uh, you, sorry, have you been in lockdown in, in Belgium or? We are locked down in Belgium indeed. And uh, we are very lucky to live in the countryside. So we enjoy the nice weather and the countryside. And, uh, we had time to listen to the birds and of course, to taste some good bottles of with the children and Fiona. So uh, we are very lucky to have the children at home, but now they left for the university back for the exams. I don't know nice, if they're nice happy to be here. <laughs> when, when was the last time you were in Pomerol? Uh, we were there about uh, three weeks ago. We uh, oh. went back car and uh, took seven hours 30. There was uh, nobody on the, on the road. Uh, uh, price was free. And at the border, they asked me, where are you going? I said, uh, and uh, Duanier said to me, I said to him, uh, to Pomerol, oh, they make good wines there. What's your, what's your wine? It's called Le Pain. I don't know Le Pain. I said to him, look at your website uh, this evening when you arrive at home. <laughs> <laughs> Have you since... Have you got an email from him trying to buy some? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Okay. No. okay. But he was really kind. He knew his wines. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I thought what we'll do first, like usual, is um, to talk a little bit about the, uh, the history, the background of both the Tiempon family and of the Pain. So, I mean, Jacques, I mean, in, in Bordeaux, it seems to me there's hundreds and hundreds of Tiempons. And I get them confused all the time, like uh, it's a very complicated family tree. So Indeed. could you explain where the, the history of the Tiempon family and how they came to Bordeaux? And while you talk, I'm going to start opening my, my bottle. Okay, because already, we already opened the bottle in advance. But uh, let's say uh, the family uh, was already in the wine trade since uh, 1842. So it's more than 150 years ago. And it's in uh, 1921 that my grandfather, 
decided to buy uh, a vineyard in uh, Bordeaux. So he bought in 21 Chateau Trollomondo, it was for sale at that moment. And then the, the business was going well. And then he had the opportunity to buy uh, Vieux Chateau Satan. In fact, it was not he didn't buy, but his wife asked the permission to, his hus to her husband if she could buy Vieux Chateau Satan. So it, it belongs to my grandmother, in fact. And oh, I, I, never, I never knew that. Yes, yes, yes. It's Alexander told me that story. I didn't know myself, so uh, <laughs> <a> story. <laughs> and uh, then, as you know, after the sunshine comes rain in the, in the weather, but in the history of the wine is the same. You had the 30s. In the 30s, you had uh, four vintages without wine, 30, 31, 32, 34, there was wine, but nobody could sell the wine and, uh, because it was a world crisis. And my grandfather was obliged to sell his biggest estate because he could no more pay the wages of his, uh, of the people. And that's because at, so, sorry, Jacques, at that time, your, your, your grandfather, yes. Yes. It was, it was, was very, very poor. I mean, not, um, not that poor, but he, he lost quite a lot of money at, uh, huh. with, uh, yes, at the time. Even uh, he could never pay the wages of his, uh, the people working for him. And you have to say as well, after three or four vintages without selling the wine or without wine, uh, it's difficult to, uh, to keep the business going on. It reminds me a little bit of the crisis we have now for some business as well, but it'd be difficult to, uh, to continue to work with uh, the economy was not going well. So, and then he, uh, luckily he kept VCC, uh, Vieux Chateau Sertan. And uh, then two of his children, uh, George and Leon, uh, moved after the Second World War to Bordeaux, both together at uh, uh, 20 children. So the one had 13 children and the other one had seven children. So from there, the champions are very fertile. And uh, now maybe we are uh, maybe 18 or more, 80 or even more champions in the region of Bordeaux. Luckily, they, all, they don't all live in Bordeaux. Some are in the south, some are in Paris, so everywhere in France. So that's a little bit why we are in Bordeaux and such a number of uh, champions are well known there. So we keep, we try to keep the reputation high. And uh, so with, uh, we have a good connection with all the members of the family. And, and can you tell me a little bit about your life before Le Pain, growing up? Oh, um, not, worth, not worth to speak about. I was not a very good student and I uh, was a problem <laughs> for my parents. <laughs> In what and, way were you not a good student? <laughs> at other, other, other distractions, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then uh, I went several times to make the Vendange as well at uh, Vieux Chateau Sertan with my uncle Léon. And um, was that in the 19th? I was in the, uh, before, the 70s, in the 70s, yeah. Yeah, before 79. So I was busy with him, picking the grapes, uh, following him in the cellar, working at night in the cellar. So I learned quite a lot and I love to do that. And then uh, I have to say as well in the beginning, what's the love for wine is beginning for me is once uh, my grandfather in 61, just one year before he died, he received uh, his pallet, but they were not pallets at the time, of uh, La Lagune from 59. And then uh, I was, I think, 14 years old. And I said, uh, we, yeah, so the wine just arrived. We are going to open this bottle. It's a very strange bottle, a kind of label, blue and red, very original for that time. And I tasted the wine. I said, that's wine. So, and that's why the connection comes that I love the wine. It's thanks to La Lagune 59. So I think it's nice. Um, nice uh, can I wine. ask? Have you drunk La Lagune 59 since yes, that time? Yes, indeed, 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 because I had the opportunity just by coincidence that I saw there was a sale in Christie's Sotheby's to, uh, and there were six, uh, no, 12 bottles for sale. And uh, so I bought them back and they come in Etikov. And when they arrived, I opened uh, the case, opened the wrap, the paper, and I saw at the bottom of the label, selected by Georges Champon, Etikov. <laughs> so this can probably moved from Belgium to England and come back to Belgium. And this wine is still uh, beautiful. Yeah, old, old vintages of La Lagoon can be very, very good. Yeah, so. definitely, definitely, yeah. And so how did you, this, um, how, can you describe how you came to, to Pomerol? To Pomerol, say, um, just, uh, you know, when you work, you make, a little, make a little business and then you make, you have always the history of the family in your mind. And then uh, there was a little vineyard for sale uh, next to uh, Vieux Chateau Sertan uh, that belongs to a uh, widow. And my uncle always said, the day of God asked for the, the soul of this widow. 
uh, we should buy this part of land to add to visitors at home. This was Madame Lulu. Madame Luby, Madame Luby indeed, yes. Uh, and when she died, she had two daughters who were not interested in the wine. There was, well, a contrat de fermage, as we say in French, where somebody was responsible to, to uh, pick the grapes, to make the, to maintain the, the vine and to uh, pick the grapes and make the wine. But the, the wine was not made at the pain, it was made in the Land de Pomerol at uh, the, the estate of the old uh, Maitre de Chais. And uh, instead of going to Vieux Chateau Satan, I wanted to buy it, but when uh, Leon, my uncle, presented the, the pain to uh, his brother and sister, and they said, oh, no, it's far too expensive. I remember it was one million French francs at that time. <laughs> so uh, it's far too expensive, we don't buy it. And I used to work with my uncle of mine uh, in Belgium. We had unfortunately no children. I said to my uncle, I want to buy it. Why shouldn't I buy it? And my uncle said, yes, you have to buy that. And then uh, uh, we decided with my father and my uncle to buy it together, uh, each one third of the parts of the, of the capital of the, of the company of Le Pen. So, and by the time I took over the shares of my father, and then my uncle decided to, uh, to uh, separate his shares too. And then he gave some shares to Alexandre from Vichetot Satan and half to me too. So uh, we are both together in, uh, in the past. I'm very happy to have uh, him, even to have Alexandre there because it's very important, certainly to maintain the vines. As I always say, vines is 95%, makes the quality of the, of the, of the characteristics of the wine. Yeah, so, yeah. Thanks to him, it's very good. Can I just ask, I want to sort of, uh, clarify one thing. The first, the first vintage of Le Pen was seventy nine. But correct me if I'm wrong. The, the there was a kind of Chateau du Pain that was sold in 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 Belgium that Madame Luby would sell. I think to the Sanders family. Indeed, before... indeed, true. That's true. Yes, so the Chateau du Pain existed before. So I kept the name. Indeed, uh, Mrs. Sanders. Uh, Origi, its origin were in the north of France and a lot of connections in Belgium and se, se, sold quite a lot of wines from uh, Chateau, Chateau Dupin at the time uh, with a very ugly label, but the wine was delicious <laughs> to uh, Belgium. And just for a little story, uh, I think it's in 67, my uncle Leon found the wine so good as well. He, he presented the wine of uh, 67 to uh, his brother, Gerard, the wine trade here. And they, they decided to buy two barrels of Le Pain at that time, which was still made in uh, the, the house of Le Pen himself, and the bottles, death, but the two brothers bottled uh, 67, uh, uh, 67 uh, Le Pen in uh, bottles at the, at the chateau, and it was only sold in Belgium. I think oh, I, still really? one, I have still one or two bottles remaining. So we should <laughs> taste them together. <laughs> yeah, have you, and, and you've tasted it, yes? Yes, yes, yes. It's still a uh, good battle, but uh, time to, to drink, of course. It's, uh, it's a monument of history. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you tell me, we're up to 1979 now, can you tell me what was it like, what was your first days at Le Pen like? Because Pomerol was a very different place to what it's like now, wasn't it? Definitely, yes, 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 yes. And at uh, the time as well, if I remember 79, uh, big problem, I had no more money at all, so uh, I had to uh, make the wine with the the, 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 the moyen du bois with uh, the things I could find. So I had to, just one tank and one little distorting machine working on 220 volts, there was not, uh, no power, and uh, a lot of things were made by hand, even the uh, uh, racking the barrels. I make it, I made it by hand too. It was just with a with a pump, you know, to for bicycles you know, you use now with uh, <laughs> two feet in it. So it was a little uh, place with no lot of hair, a lot of sulfur because it suffered the barrel. So it was a uh, pioneering work. But, Actually, uh, I've got I, I found a, a photo of the old the old Le Pen. So I yeah. think. Uh, Maybe we could we can we can show the, the, the old the old Le Pen that doesn't doesn't exist anymore, but it yeah. might give people watching this uh, an idea of what it what it looked like. So here we go. Yeah, the pages we of go. Yes. <laughs> we go. I, I took this on one of my one of my earliest visits, I think, when I eventually yeah, yeah. found Le Pen. No, no, so it's a page of history indeed. It was a house upstairs, and uh, even Alexander used to live there in '79, but he lived there one year. Yeah. 
with his wife and uh, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and this is located where in Pomerol? If what's uh, it near? Uh, it's near the neighbors. Uh, used to be Chateau Guillaume. It was uh, not far from uh, Trottenois. And uh, the other side of the ditch, you have Vieux Chateau Sertan with uh, the neighbor. And uh, let's say that's a little bit uh, ex uh, on the side of the plateau, let's say about, but uh, my, as my uncle Leon said, it was a special, special place for to have a, a very original uh, soil, a little bit different from those you find on the plateau with a lot of clay. Here, I think the gravel is more uh, present and uh, the clay is deeper. And the, uh, the, the positive thing as well is on the slope. So when it's uh, bad weather raining, the drainage goes very fast. The only thing is when it's hot vintages, it's more difficult because it doesn't keep the water. But we try, still try to make wine. And I'd say uh, we have not to complain about the qualities of the wine we make now. It's uh, changed a little bit, but uh, it's a little bit harder. I think before it was easier to make the wine. When, when you bought the vineyard, was it 100% uh, Merlot planted in the vineyard? It was 100% uh, Merlot, but let's say the old uh, people, when they had to uh, replace here and there a plant of uh, vines, they used what they find. And uh, for, probably um, here and there, you can find some uh, feet of Cabernet. But uh, by the time, I think there will be less and less. And the maximum uh, Cabernet I made it was probably because we pick separately. Uh, its maximum is a little, little barrel of Cabernet. Certainly with the last part we bought uh, 10 years ago, half hectare next to, uh, between uh, uh, Sertan and uh, Rouget. And uh, there was a little bit more Cabernet, but we always, pick, we always uh, uh, blend, kept, kept apart, never blend to the pan. Yeah. Oh, one, one question asked by one of the, the viewers uh, um, watching this, it's a good question. And it's, why, it's a question I've asked myself sometimes is the, the soil, like you say, is gravel. So do you know why there wasn't more Cabernet Franc planted? Because usually you expect more Cabernet Franc to be planted on gravel soils, but it's... Yeah, it's a good question, but I have to say, I, I respected the vineyard as it was uh, before. When I received the vineyard, it was, let's say, 100% uh, Merlot, here and there, uh, 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 Cabernet, but it was uh, not a lot, so uh, not worth to speak about. And, uh, but I think... But I want to, to keep the same, uh, same uh, philosophy, to, to stay, uh, to keep it as it was, and its reputation was already made in the mind of my... Uncle Leon from Vichotot-Satan. But I think after the frosts of the 56 frosts, when mm. people were planting, uh, it was much easier to grow Merlot than Cabernet Franc, which was always quite difficult. And mm. I think people were, grew, were planted a lot yeah. more um, Merlot. And that's really after, if you talk to someone like Jean-Claude Berroway, he says the dominance of Merlot came after the 56 frosts. Yeah, that's right. Did you ever imagine what would Le Pan be like with a little, with 10% Cabernet Franc? Do you ever imagine or? I have no idea, but. Uh, we, 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 but we, 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 we try it in the blends when we're doing the blending. Yes, but. Uh, it doesn't I, really work. Anyway, I prefer to stay with what I make and uh, not to, uh, to bring on the market something with not 100% metal. Yeah. One, one question we, we should ask is, why is it called Le Pan? Uh, let's say uh, when we bought the vignette, it was already Chateau Le Pin, and at that time there were four pine trees before I, buy, I bought, uh, before I built uh, the, the wine cellar, because in fact I built two, so two wine cellars before, you have the old building and the, behind the old building I, bought, uh, I, I built uh, a wine cellar to keep the barrels, so but uh, now everything is uh, destroyed and it's more accurate and more easy to work than it used to be before, so more hygienic. But and, we still uh, have the pine trees. We, we saved two pine trees, indeed, yeah. So the, the, are the pine trees, did you plant them or are they original? Yes, so one is original and one I, plant, I planted, uh, let's say about uh, 20, 20 more than that, 30 years ago. It's going very well. And in fact, it's protecting the older one because the wind comes inside and then uh, it protects the old one. So it should be Le Deux Pins. Le <laughs> Deux Pins, yeah. <laughs> Maybe for a second label. <laughs> <laughs> And can you tell me, I mean, 
when you started in the so with the first vintage of Le Pen was 1979. Yes. But it's difficult to believe now. But like when you started, like the you had to work very hard to make it uh, better known and it was sold like it was a very cheap wine for compared to now. I mean, uh, yeah, can, you, can you tell me a bit about that? Uh, no, we think we, when we make wine, even now, you don't think about price. I think when you make the wine, you try to make the best with what the nature gives you and uh, you listen to uh, some advice from uh, people and uh, from a cousin and other people and we make a synthesis of how to make the wine. But 79, I was just making wine, trying to make the best. It was very uh, pioneering work uh, because we uh, had uh, less uh, financial possibilities. And I sold 79, all the wine was sold in Belgium to the wine trade due to my uncle. Then we make 80, we make the 81. And then the, the wine was presented to um, other wine merchants. And by the time the reputation was made, but uh, without reaching some high reputation. I think it's uh, uh, when uh, some people like, uh, it was, uh, what was his name? Uh, for, we were, uh, Jacques Luxet. Jacques Luxet was writing every year uh, a book about the vintages. And he, he wrote in his book, Le Pais, uh, DRC of Bordeaux. I said, this guy is uh, crazy. It's not always possible. <laughs> then he had uh, René Gabriel from Mervenpick. who was writing as well. He was at, at a tasting at um, Sofitel during a Vin Expo in that year. And he uh, blind tasting. And then he called me, he said, uh, who are you? You are Jack Tampon. I taste your wine. I want to, to know you. Your wine is uh, fantastic. I said, I don't know, nothing special. And then, uh, and then finally, as yes, well, it was Robert Parker who tasted the 82 or 81, I don't remember. And he gave uh, 100 points to 82. And I think that was the beginning of the uh, increase of reputation and the rest followed. Uh, yeah. Did he, did he? Just out of interest, did, did Robert Parker give the Le Pan 82 100 points at the beginning when it was released? Uh, no, mm. later, later, later. I think it was in... Uh, I think it's 84, 85. 85. He didn't 84. taste it on Premier. No, he didn't taste no it on Premier. It, it, yeah. He, he no. tasted in... Uh, because that time, the Premier was not as it is now. All the ceremonies are... Uh, at that time, well, only a few wine uh, crit crit critics come to taste, or wine merchants. Any merchants. Yeah. Any merchants uh, mm -hmm. That's all. But now it's just a world cinema around the tastings of Premier. Yeah. Uh, one, uh, one, one story which I... I love, and I um, is I think I can't remember. Maybe you told me of Fiona was about when you were Le Pan was not known, and I think you went to somebody uh, a merchant to try and introduce your wine, and he said to leave the ca a case with him. That's right. And the, uh, no, no, at, at, yes, but at the beginning, do I? I uh, that, no, that was, yes, it was uh, beginning. I, I left some uh, samples to the courtiers in, uh, in Bordeaux. And uh, he said to me, put it on the shelf of the window. And I said, look at the shelf. There's plenty of samples. I said, forget it. Uh, so I, I left it there. I didn't hear nothing about uh, this courtier. And only a few years later, when the reputation was made, then he arrives there. Jack, I remember you gave some samples. Can you, uh, I have some orders. Can you uh, sell me some wines? I'm sorry, no, it's too late now. Yes. So, and then uh, about the reputation of 82, uh, maybe you were speaking about, I was looking for 82 because at the beginning I sold everything to uh, pay my bankers. I should have waited to do that, but and it's too late now. <laughs> you you so, could have bought the bank now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I looked for a case and I found in the clients of my uncle, there was uh, some, a doctor who bought a case of repair. And uh, I called him and said, I want to buy this case back because I have no more. I have no no one pain in my cellar. It's impossible, he said to me. So I come to see you. So I come to see you. I went to his cellar with him. And uh, there as well, in a little corner in the dark, there was one case alone. And uh, I said, I think there she is. What is that? He said, I don't know this case. So that's the I buy that. I buy it back at that price. Oh, OK, you get it. So we went uh, upstairs. And then when we opened the door of the cellar, suddenly arrives his wife. She just came back from the hairdresser. And she said, what's that? I say yes, Jacques is taking back this case and he pays that price. No question about this case back to the seller. <laughs> so I couldn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other story I remember was uh, the late John Avery telling me that he, he placed an order in Pomerol and then by mistake a merchant put, I think it was Le Pan 85 onto his yeah, order. Right. 
Yeah. And he, yeah, he sent it all back because he didn't. <laughs> he said, I didn't order this. And so, uh, <laughs> but it, it, it kind of gives a, a good idea for people that don't know was that it wasn't an overnight success story. It was a lot of work and years of building the reputation of, of Le Pan, I think. Is that, is that correct? Uh, yes, but I think as well, we have to, to stay simple and uh, I, uh, to, to, uh, to keep your feet on the floor, you know, and that's important. And to say after, as well to, for the story, I remember that uh, uh, people like uh, Gerard Pers and uh, uh, Tunevin, they often they come to taste the wine of Le Pain and to try to understand uh, what the secret of Le Pain was. And each time I told them the secret is outside, it's the vines. You can, see, you can see everything inside, everything is simple. It's a no secret. You can come when you want, but there's no secret. So it was very interesting tastings at that time. And we enjoyed <laughs> meetings. Uh, yes. When, when do you think was, um, as we move into the, the 90s, uh, when do you think you made the Le Pan that you thought that that's the Le Pan, that's the wine I want to make. I think uh, the nineties, well, ninety, of course, is one of the nicest examples of Le Pan. What Le Pan should be, or could be, could be made, but everything depends on the climate. I think you are, you try to make the best with what the climate gives you, and every vintage difference. Uh, the climate is a very good, uh, is very important uh, uh, vector for the, the of quality. And uh, you know when there are vintages like uh, O3 when it was uh, very wet and rainy and uh, O3 was very hot, very hot, sorry, very hot. But uh, it was uh, not possible to make a good wine. Yes, but it, if it, 90s, it was, 98 was 98 was very nice. George's vintage. Yeah, 98, uh, 90, 91, 92, even 92 is uh, good because uh, I had some visitors a few months ago and. Uh, she said to me, each time I see 92, I said, no, it's not good. So then she, she saw the pile of 1992 and said, oh, this wine, I tasted not a long time ago because we went to a blind tasting and only had one, 92 of the pads only had in my house. So we tasted blind and it was still very good. So the people were going, yes, uh, good vintage, maybe Pesac a great uh, first girl, Pesac maybe. And it was still uh, very drinkable. So it's, and, it's a compliment. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, during this time as well, you expanded the vineyard because you started, when you started in 1979, you had the original parcel. Uh, yes, with one. And, then you, one and, and then, then you bought little pieces and you added. Yeah, indeed. Um, indeed, indeed. We have, you have to know as well that, as you know very well, that uh, Pongol was uh, divided in uh, at least. Uh, 180 uh, owners, well nowadays we're maybe uh, under 30, under 20 owners, so uh, there were a lot of little parts, so I tried to buy all the little parts which next door to Le Pain with the same soil, so uh, now I increased the, the vineyard to almost, almost uh, three hectares. I've got, um, from, in, in the book I wrote, I think you, you drew one of the best maps that I think is in the book yeah. uh, of Le Pain. And the, the reason why I, I love this map is that it shows you um, where you extended Le Pain. I think we've got it on screen now, so you can see. Yeah, well, this, yeah. yeah I, did, I did do another map actually, where I in, inverted the colors, so it's easier to read. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we've got it, but. Um, yeah, we, we got it well, yes. You have like Croix Saint-Georges, you see, and you have Vieux Château Sertan. Yeah. Uh, so on, on the back, yes, yes, on, on the left, so to Guillaume. So you've got where, where the numbers are, that's, that's the year that you... You bought you, the parts, indeed, mm -hmm. the land. 83. 80, 85 uh, was, yes, 50, uh, yes, and, and uh, a lot of time I bought a, a little part with a little house as well, so uh, each time, so very yeah. curious. Uh, uh, and the house is just on the left-hand side where they look like fried eggs, but... <laughs> like on the left hand side, pine trees. <laughs> Maison Le Pain. That's the original house, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. Yeah, yeah. you can, you can. Yes, this, yes. this actually. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is actually a scan of your original drawing because on the left hand side you can see the the rings on yes, the yes, sketchbook where you drew the 
the original uh, the original drawing. So, oh yeah, uh, indeed, 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 indeed. Yeah, yeah. The page of history with all the vintages, uh, the, the years where I buy the, the, the parts, indeed. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting that it's important for you. Oh, there we go. This is, uh, yeah. is inverted. Uh, it's easier to see. So you can see the lobby in the middle. And it's, mm -hmm. it's important that Le Pan is in one kind of parcel. Even though you bought small rows of vines, Le Pan is still one kind of part it's block. Of entity. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And when was, so how many hectares are there now for Le Pan? I think there are most uh, three hectares uh, all in total. So and when you, when you started, how many hectares were there then? Just uh, one hectare where the, you see the name of Lobby, uh, yeah. was in the middle of the, the map. And that was only that. And how many cases would you produce each year of Le Pan? It was very, very uh, small, wasn't it? Nowadays, uh, I think 400, 500 cases. Uh, not so enough. Very, yeah. I mean, that's very small compared to, say, Petrus, which is about 2,000 cases, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's yeah. still very small. It's a little bit like in Burgundy, I think. So where the properties are a little, the clima are a little too. Uh, yeah. And do you want to expand in the future, or is uh, that? I want to, uh, want to expand it? in the future, but the thing is, uh, my uh, parcel has to follow, and I don't like to have debts in the banks. So uh, I think to expand now, uh, looking in other regions. And uh, ten years ago, for instance, I, I, I had the opportunity to buy a, a property next to Trollomondo. So back to the page of history of the family. Uh, yeah, and that was about. Uh, eight hectares big and it was a nice location and there it's a working progress so uh, we have 10 years time now we, we feel the the progress in the work we made there and it's so you mm. and what's the name of the property the uh, name is uh, leaf it's another tree if is a kind of yew tree in english and uh, if yes if it's yew tree in english if in french and what was the first vintage for, for Leaf? The uh, first vintage for this was uh, 2010, but I was not that happy with the quality. Nevertheless, it was a great vintage. And uh, we decided to use the old label, Au Planté, for the first vintage. So, uh, and then the first vintage was in fact 11. It's interesting because one, one of your, um, if you're not happy with the quality of your wine, you're not afraid to, not release the wine like you've done indeed. with the plan and like you did with the first finish of leaf. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Yes. So yes. I think uh, people expect uh, when they see the pain, they expect a good wine, and uh, it has to be uh, in my range of uh, the level of quality I, I tend to make. And if it's not, it doesn't reach the level of quality, I don't bring it to the market. And so, uh, Fiona, do you have a, a, a say in that decision as well? If you. Uh... There are lots of conversations in the middle of the night uh, <laughs> as to whether we're going to do it or not. Why the middle but of I the night? <laughs> well, because yeah. that's when we get it. That's when your darkest conversations are always held about three o'clock in the morning. But I think, um, I think Shaq's uh, pretty uncompromising about the quality and um, the bankers may not be happy, but I think it stood us in very good stead. And um, it's you know very, luckily it's not very often it's uh, well it's been 2003 and 2013 um, were the two vintages that we didn't make Le Pain. Um, yeah. but I think they were both those vintages were a good decision mm, exactly. especially exactly. afraid to mention but especially at the prices that Le Pain commands these days yeah yeah so it's important for you that somebody opening a bottle of Le Pan is sort of has a level of quality that they can ex expect. Is that, expect. that's important for you? That's what we hope, yes. That's what, you, that's what we do for, yes. Yeah, and I suppose yeah, now... It, 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 make, it makes us thirsty. I'm speaking a lot, but it makes me thirsty. I want to taste the wine. I know. I, so, I, so I've got this bottle of Le Pan 2011, which I'm just about to open. With, I'm using... I'm using a Venice corkscrew as well, so hopefully it works. 
Can you, as I open it, can you tell me, we were talking just now about more difficult, difficult growing seasons. 2011, what was the growing season like? That's a good question that I didn't prepare, but I think... Uh, to be honest, <laughs> it was cloudy and wet. It was, it was cloudy and wet, but I think it's, uh, it should be a good vintage. Probably not for Merlot. I think uh, when I speak with uh, Alexandre, he said, uh, I should say it's a very great vintage for the Cabernet Franc in uh, Pomerol and not that for, too much for the Merlot. But nevertheless, I got a sip of the uh, 11 and I'm not, uh, I'm, I think it's uh, still a good wine, even if it's not Cabernet Franc. Uh, it's, it's a, a great I'm, 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 it's, uh, it's, uh, Yes, but we indeed. But uh, no, it's a, uh, I'm very happy with the, the quality we made there uh, in 11, even when it was more difficult than the, the two years before, like 09 and 10. So yeah. 11, of course, it's been the shadow of uh, the two great vintages. And it was our friend, uh, Ro Richards, who recognized the quality of uh, 11, and certainly 11 of VCC was a very great wine due to the Cabernet Franc was in the quality. So I wanted to taste this uh, 11 de Pain to uh, compare with 11 Fier Chateau Satan, where I Taste already two bottles this week. Yeah, uh, last week and this week. Yes, yeah. It's great, um, uh, great vintage for Versatos at all. I've got a question for Fiona. Actually, something you just said. You said uh, it's got a great Le Pan nose. What is a great Le Pan nose? How would you describe what what do what do we look for? Um, I think the first thing you pick up when you when you sort of have a good whiff of Le Pan is that lovely pomerol, truffly, um, chocolatey um, flavour. It's not so much Le Pan, it's not about violets uh, and cassis like some uh, pomerols are. It's got a much sort of more earthy, um, a slightly roasted character to it always. People used to say it was because of the oak, but and then uh, I remember pouring out the wine from the vats to several people who visited during, us during the harvest. And it's there, as you know, Neil, you know, right from the beginning. And I think that slightly mocha, tobacco, mm. earthy quality is very much a Le Pain characteristic that really people who have tasted Le Pain a bit recognize and, um, and it stands out. I don't know if, if, if you would agree with that. What's, what's funny is before uh, about an hour ago, because I hadn't, I couldn't remember tasting it in bottle. I looked up my old score. And I gave it, I gave it quite a poor score, to be honest. So <laughs> I was thinking, oh yeah, I must have, I must have sort of said. And I was, you know, I, I'm quite a mean, horrible, horrible oh, critic, horrible. So uh, I looked back and I thought, oh dear, like <laughs> everybody's on opinion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I must admit, I'm not. Um, some people have said the 2011s have improved a lot in bottle. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not one of them. I sort of, I prefer 2012, especially on the right bank. It's, mm -hmm. I think they've, they've matured. So, mm -hmm. but it's fascinating to come back and um, retaste after, are we now, almost 10 years. Do you think uh, a question I'd like to ask is, when should you drink a Lepage? Is it a wine to be drunk young? Should you age it for 20, 30 years? Well, it depends, it depends on the, the vintage, but uh, uh, there's one pile of wine I still have. Medizim is uh, 84, but you have to forget 84 that's passed. Uh, 87 is still drinkable. Uh, 91, drinkable too. But so I think when at the beginning we make wine, the reputation of Le Pain was made with 100% Merlot. A lot of critics said, oh, this wine cannot last. And if you taste now 83, you taste 90, you taste uh, 95, 97, uh, 90, even 97, they, uh, of 92, of vintage too. But the wine is still there. So uh, I think uh, it can last uh, for years. Depends on vintage, 20, 30 years without problem. Do you have a favorite of vintage, like not, not a famous year, but a vintage of Le Pain where you think in that year we did really, we, we did really well? I think 97. I, uh, 94. 94, yes, 94, especially in 94. Yeah, 94 is great, yeah. Uh, very, yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. 
and 94 right. and bottle you made an experience to have bottling some bottles without cork but with a screw cap 2004 2004 so that was 2004 sorry yeah 2004 that we made the experience but uh, it was not very positive so we really? come back to the corks mm -hmm. <laughs> <Not> for, <laughs> just for us for our cellar <laughs> well i'm interested what what was what did you find the screw cap uh, it more, more oxidation. We, we did it just as an experiment. It yeah. was fine for the first seven, six or seven years. Yes, yeah. And then suddenly it went downhill fast. Yeah. yeah. Very strange. Yeah. 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 Luckily, we only did about 24 bottles. I yeah, think. Much, yeah, too yeah. much. Too, too much, much. Too much. Too much. Yeah. And I have to ask, I mean, how did. Uh, how did you two meet? I mean, uh, how does the wine, the, the, the Belgian winemaker in in working in Pomerol meet Fiona Morrison, English master of wine? Where did you meet? Was it over over Le Pain or? No, it was, uh, Fiona used to work in Bordeaux at the CEVB. Uh, mm. And uh, she was a good friend of my cousin Bernadette and Francois Champon. And uh, you know, when at Marriott, so I will be somebody, uh, we know somebody for you. And uh, my cousin say, uh, I know somebody Scottish uh, could should should go for you. And then uh, we never during five years we were speaking about Fiona. And we never met. And then there was a, a dinner in uh, Buyak in Bordeaux organized by my cousin. And uh, he said, there she is. Oh, I'm going to speak with her. We still speak together. <laughs> and then did you uh, did you pour a la pan on your first date? Uh, no, uh, you invited me the next day. We invited the next day and uh, to visit uh, Le Pain, indeed. Yeah, and there was the first moment we uh, tasted together Le Pain. And Fiona, did you know Le Pain before? I mean, I guess you were selling the wine. In, in the uh, well, I mean, I I took several journalists there, but Shaq was never there, and people would would want to take photos of the of the, of the pine tree, um, but I never got to taste it and. Uh, when cousin Bernadette said, you know, I'd like you to meet Jacques, I said, well, I want to taste the wine. You know, I don't need to remind about Jacques, but I want to go and taste <laughs> the wine. Um, so, I mean, I certainly knew about the reputation beforehand, and I was probably one of the few people um, who actually knew how to find Le Pain. Yeah, because you know the, the map was wrong and that you yeah. I was going to the wrong place, and uh, yeah. uh, like 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 half half of wine world, I think. Yeah, vivant yeah. caché, vivant heureux. Jacques always says, "Live yeah. hidden, live happy." Yeah. yeah. Okay, that sort of finishes sort of the first part of this interview, and in the second part, I want to talk a little bit more about in the vineyard and the the winemaking a bit. So, let's uh, in the vineyard. Jack, can you tell me what is your approach in the vineyard in terms of uh, pruning, viticulture? What is your approach? Well, we always look uh, to prune uh, short, not to have a big crop. And uh, honestly, as I said in the beginning, it's uh, Alexandre, now Guillaume, who takes care about the, the vines. And uh, they do it uh, very well, I think. Uh, not to compare the time that my uncle uh, Leon, the father of Alexander, was uh, was working. It was the old method. Nowadays, everything is uh, made with more precis precision. Uh, every part of the vine, even on one hectare, if you have one square, there are some parts in this square can be different from another part of the square. So everything is put on a map. So it's a lot of precision and uh, analyze the soil. Even the soil is different on the back of the slope and the top of the slope. And all these things are very uh, important, put it on map. And uh, there's as well a thing we do uh, need now before is they use uh, sensors uh, before the harvest to, uh, to check the uh, vigorosity of the vines. And then on, on the result of that, they can uh, choose a date to pick some parts of uh, vines and wait for other parts. And so you see the pickers stopping in the middle of a uh, on the third of the vines stopping. And then we do that two or three days later where the maturity is uh, better than it should be. So different from before, because before we picked all the vines in uh, one day or two days maximum. That was <laughs> all and nowadays we do it maybe on uh, four or ten five, days, of, yeah, ten, ten days, days. but uh, mm -hmm. four or five different days, two hours, three hours there, one hour there, and then each time. So it's a lot of work in the, in the shed to have different vats because every vat has different parts of vines. 
then and then afterwards we make the blend of these different vats to have the opportunity to choose really the best to make the to make the path. Uh, and about to to give the response about the uh, maintaining the vines, I think the best who can respond is Alexandre and Guillaume, who both both are in the vines every day. When in the summer or the spring you are there, you see you see just two straw hats walking, uh, passing the uh, the vines in Vieux Chateau Saint and the Pin, and this, there are two uh, my two cousins speaking with each vine. They know all the vine by their by their first name. Yeah. Yeah. And does does do you and Alexander have the same view to viticulture? Do you yeah, have any have, differences? No, I don't think we have the same uh, uh, vision. And let's say Alexander was a little bit uh, introvert, had not a lot of contact with other. Well, uh, was making good wine, but while uh, Guillaume, he is more open. He has more. Uh, he's, it's true. He traveled all over the world. Uh, making wine in all the parts of the wine, uh, ending his uh, traveling in Hong Kong uh, during three months working for Watson. And he has a broader approach of uh, making wine and commercial, uh, commercial type as well. And you have a very contact as well, very good contact with uh, the, uh, the people from uh, Cheval Blanc, for instance. So where before there was uh, the neighbors were a little bit jealous from each other, where here the young people they have very good contacts and more open and they, they speak about the experience they have. And I think that's very uh, uh, enrichissant. Um, enriching. Enriching, well, we for, enri and enriching for everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, and that now is uh, Guillaume, Alexander's son. Is he yes. taking uh, more, um, is he taking more, uh, is he more active in Le Pan now? As He's more active in Le Pan now, definitely. I yes. could be actually yeah. yeah, yeah. You still yeah. make one. Which I stay, I made the wine, indeed, yeah. But, then, yeah. but he's always with advice from, and uh, always keeping, as Fiona said, keeping things simple and not intervening when making the wine. Get, let nature do and uh, yeah. uh, just providing things and keep it, sim keep it simple. Do you have any interest in like, uh, biodynamic wines or anything like that? Well, let's, or? let's say that uh, Alexander Guillaume, they're working in the re in the tendency to make bio wine, of organic wine, say in English, organic, uh, wine. organic wine. But they will never tell it or never uh, write it because if mm -hmm. necessary, they can always intervene with another uh, product. Was, uh, but they, they, they will work to that. But we try, we are not telling it. So we will I never... Guess. We never have a, a bio label. Yeah, I guess because your vineyard is quite small, it's maybe easier for you to um, incorporate some of those techniques. If you had a hum if you have a hundred hectares, yeah, yeah, being you know being organic can be more difficult. But a small vineyard, you can you can uh, can, you can make the approach definitely. Yeah. yeah. And when you do the picking, how many harvesters do you? Does it take? Uh, the picking is the same uh, people that picks Vieux Chateau Saint Anne. We have maybe 30. We, have, uh, we do um, 10 rows at a time. Yes. With four, so we're about a team of 30, but when 30, we have, 30 people, yeah. We so, have about um, at least 12 sorters. Yeah, definitely. So we pick the grapes and we sort the grapes at the end of the vines of the roads of the vines mm -hmm. and uh, before they go in the uh, trolley to go to the shed. So uh, there are about seven or eight people at the de tree and uh, just at the base and just at the end of the, of the rows. So uh, the grapes are still not damaged and full. So mm -hmm. it's very interesting, but you have to survive the uh, those who are checking the grapes too. Do you do you have any interest in like optical sorting or is it too small? No, 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 no. I think uh, I think neither, neither Alexander nor Guillaume I think so are interested in that for the moment. We yeah. prefer the high of the of the human being and uh, yeah, people yeah. who have the wine to do that very well. I think we're very lucky, Neil, in that we're small enough that we can keep it simple, mm. and that's a really the great advantage of such a small cellar yeah. is that we can do it ourselves and um, and we can keep it very simple and hands-on and we can use our own eyes and smells and... Yeah. And, and before and we talk about... Oh, sorry, Ken. Uh, yeah. And often the same people working in the cellar because during 
25 years, I had a good friend of mine, Tuan, a Dutchman. He comes to me to uh, to help me. And I said to him, uh, you can't go elsewhere because the transfer price will be too high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, before we talk about the winemaking, we should just explain, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the new, the new winery was built in 2011. was finished. 11? 11. 11. 11. 11. First vintage. Yeah. What, are the, what were the differences between the old winery and the new winery? Uh, I think the old winery was more uh, amateur. Let's say there was no uh, engineering, no uh, temperature control. Uh, it was more handmade because even at night I had to uh, get out of my bed at two or three uh, hours in that at night to hmm. check the temperature, to refresh the, 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 the tanks. For instance, there was no uh, eating or refreshing uh, machine. So I used uh, tap water from the uh, bullocks from the eating, um, uh, <laughs> the, from the kitchen. From the kitchen above? Yes, above with a, with a pipe, up to uh, a plastic pipe to the tanks to, uh, to warm it up. Or I had to go to fetch uh, uh, the, 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 I would say, uh, the uh, ice at the... Uh, you would have to go and get carbo glass. The carbo glass. So I had to go to Bordeaux at that time. So uh, my car was full, my brake was full of carbo glass. And the guy said, don't close the windows, otherwise you're killed. Mm. So you're dead. <laughs> so I went with that to, uh, to, to refresh the wine. But that's, very, that's uh, makes part of the history. And at that time, we were young and we got physical, physically, we could manage to do it. But it was not very comfortable, but the result was there. That's the most important yeah, thing. You still, you still made the 82 and the 85 and the 89 and the 90. Yes, yes. 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 I but, think if people say you have to be very hygienic in your cellar, but that time it was very difficult to be 100% hygienic. But mm. nevertheless, the result was good. What I appreciate is that we can actually do the pumping overs with actually having a, more than a foot between the top of a tank and the roof. Yeah. You don't yeah. have to do pumping over yeah. on your belly. You know, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's, the comfort level is much better. Yeah. Can you describe the winery to me, like the vats and what you use? Yes, uh, no, we use, uh, we have used uh, stainless steel tanks to make the wine. I think it's, uh, no matter it's concrete or wood, but wood's more difficult to maintain because you have to say when you make the wine, it's a uh, few juice we arrived. And after four night, two weeks maximum, it's, it's wine. It's uh, alcohol is there, no more sugar. So, and I don't think it's, it brings something to the wine uh, in a uh, fortnight or three weeks. Um, we, the new uh, cellar, we used again, uh, stainless steel tanks with double skin. So it's good insulation. The good insulation is good too in concrete tanks because that uh, keeps the warmth. And in these new tanks, you have the same kind of work to, uh, with the insulation to keep the warm and the temperature. Uh, today is very easier to work, to work on the wine because you can control the temperature and uh, uh, the, the hygiene is more uh, accurate where before it was uh, very difficult to maintain and to control temperatures almost impossible. So uh, to just tell a little story I heard from an old winemaker, there was a, a place where they, they used to press with a hand press, a cage press on the place in uh, Lepin. I mean, there was kind of uh, was it, uh, in English, uh, a basin. uh, basement where the wine juice went in. I said, keep this basement because when your tank is too warm, you can leave the wine in this basement. It's time to refresh and then you bring it back in the tank. So but it was a good uh, lesson I received because I used twice, to, I, made use, I made twice the experiment to refresh <laughs> the, uh, the wine. It was not very Catholic, but it worked. Yeah. Yeah. But well, now there's no more excuse to make a uh, bad wine in uh, in the pan. The building is made by a Belgian architect who used to work for the White Chapel in London too. And uh, I'm very happy with mm. the architecture. It's beautiful. Uh, I love architecture too. Even our son is uh, studying architecture too, William, and uh, in Leuven. And um, uh, it's a pleasure to work there because uh, more space and. Uh, all the uh, things are very easy and uh, clean and uh, easy to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the vats, they're slightly smaller than they were before, is that correct? They're quite small, the vats. They are, I think, they seven. Size from... Yeah, the size goes from uh, 42 hectoliters to uh, 
18 hectoliters, so it's not that big, but uh, it's big enough to contain the, the different parts of vines and a maximum uh, crop. So uh, even now, I, from time to time, with the division we have now with uh, Guillaume, I use little tanks from 1,000 liters of uh, 1,200 liters. So uh, this really uh, a lot of precision. And we keep, try to keep everything separate in the cellars, in the barrels as well. We use 100% uh, new barrels, uh, most of them Sega Moho, a little bit from Taranso. Mm -hmm. And uh, still, uh, till uh, two or three years, we made the experiment to use uh, uh, barrels from uh, one year that already contained one vintage, maybe 20% uh, of uh, barrels from one year because we feel that with the increase of uh, sugar contents in the vines, in the, in the grapes, sorry, you have more alcohol as well. So uh, before we had natural alcohol at uh, 12 and a half, 13, while now we have 14, 14 and a half. And it seems, and when I hear from other people as well, that uh, the interaction with alcohol and wood uh, gives a different taste. So uh, we try to avoid too much of the, to bring 100% wood nowadays as we used to do before. So that's a bit a change we uh, were obliged to make uh, with a different uh, the change of climate. So, what was the first vintage that you used? Some one-year-old or some used uh, I think two years two, ago. Uh, yes. Yes. Oh, uh, no, in 16, 16. we used a little bit. Yeah. And then uh, last year, uh, to, uh, in 19 and 18, there we used the 20% of... Uh, yeah. Is, it's a, sort of, it's, a, it's a subject that it, look, many people discuss at the moment, but when, how important is the alcohol level when you're making the wine? Some people say that the alcohol levels are getting too high in Bordeaux, or does it not, yes. does it not matter? But, or? Yes, but nowadays you have, you have to, it's uh, nature gives you that, but you're not used to have that, it's a uh, 14, 14 and a half, uh, some people make uh, even more than that, but uh, that's uh, the, 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 the climate which brings that. You can always pick the grapes a little bit earlier, but then you have a lack, lack of uh, maturity or a little bit of acidity. Then you have to correct the wines. And so we prefer to uh, find uh, the right maturity. And let's say for the 19, first we pick the grapes, uh, young grapes first, and then luckily we are drained uh, during a, a weekend, a lot of rain. Yeah. And that uh, brought a little bit, uh, Freshness, freshness mm. to the, the, the all the grapes that we stay there. So uh, that diminished the uh, alcohol contents and uh, the proportion of sugar and juice uh, was reduced. Uh, so we made wine at maybe at 14 degrees and where the young vines were high in alcohol. So but if you need to blend both makes a good average. But yeah. the thing is, well, you need to have a good balance between sweetness in the wine and, and acidity to make the wine agreeable to drink. And I think it's what we try to achieve. Do you think the the, the, the style of Le Pan today, is it a, a different wine to the early vintages or is it, is it the same? Or it's, a, it's, a, it's a very strange, strange uh, when I think about uh, in the beginning, there was no, there was, we, uh, we blended everything. There was no uh, selection at all. Where now, I think due to the competition, uh, due to maybe Parker who put the, the wines with points, I think everybody wants to have points, so looking for points is not a good, not a good thing because I, I, I hate to have points because I always bad points at school. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, I think uh, uh, to come to say it's different than before, I don't think so. It's just an evolution. The the age of the vineyards change. Uh, maybe the, we plant new vines as well, so and we grow out all the vines. The parts are different, so that's an evolution, I think so. But I think the spirit, the, the, the background, the backbone is still there. When you taste 11, as Fiona said, mm. it is uh, it's still there. So uh, it's, uh, it's the typicity. Don't compare with Petrus with 100% Merlot as well, but the soil is different. Maybe the, the, the way of making the wine is different. And uh, so uh, it's uh, a different... Uh, painting and if different painter as well. I often compare the wine with painting when you speak about the wine, you can describe it, you can describe painter, you can des describe the period when the painting was made, you can describe uh, the millisim of the wine, you can describe uh, the, the powerful of the painting, the powerful of the wine, 
the weakness of, of the painter when he makes a, a not so good uh, painting. All the paintings are not the same. Wine as well. All the vintage are not are different too. Same for a painter. Yeah. So, and the value at the end as well. Yeah. And if you uh, if you're drinking Le Pan at home, which vintage of Le Pan is is good to open at the moment? Uh, at the moment, we drink a lot of two thousand and eight. Two thousand eight, yes, very it's nice. It's looking really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And then of time, of twelve time. as well. Yes. Now yeah. eleven, but eight eight for the moment is doing very yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. And how how often do you drink Le Pan at home? Well, I think we drink more uh, Le Pan uh, elsewhere than at home. Yeah. <laughs> you are usually invited by people who have a collection of wine and then uh, they're always uh, very happy to uh, open a bottle of Le Pain and we are very proud for that and it's always a pleasure to share this bottle with, uh, with the, the friend who is uh, enjoying your wine and for him too I think it's always nice to speak about wine with the man who made the wine. We, we drink quite a lot of Le Pain during the harvest. No, yes, because because we're, we're all there together. We've got usually got some visitors, vis some guest winemakers, yeah, yeah. and we often invite take that opportunity to invite lots of the local other winemakers to come and have dinner with us. We taste everything blind, and we taste each other's wine. So we drink. We tend to. I think that's probably when we drink most. Uh, of indeed, indeed, yeah. indeed. Yeah, but yeah. we have there. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember. I won't say who it was, but one of your Pomerol neighbours who makes very good wine as well. I remember talking to him and. We had just come from Le Pain, and he said to me, oh, "I've never, I've never been to Le Pain. I've never met Jacques or Fiona or anyone." I said, "Well, have you ever knocked at the door?" And uh, no, I said, "Well, maybe if you knock at the door, and oh, they're very nice people, you should, you yeah. should try." They're and, welcome. Uh, they're welcome. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and then just looking a bit at the the few, the, we've got the 2019 vintage that I'm tasting at the moment. Um, I'm not tasting it for, I'm going to taste it later on when I come down to, to see you, but how was the 19 vintage at, at Le Pain? I think we are, um, always very difficult to speak when uh, the wine is not sold, of course, uh, but here I dare to say that uh, we will sell Le Pain in uh, 2019. I think it's a, a great vintage. We were there three weeks ago and we tasted together with Alexandre, Fiona and uh, Guillaume to make uh, the blend. And uh, Guillaume and Alexander were very uh, astonished about uh, the quality of Le Pain. They always tend to say that uh, Vieux Chateau Satan is better, but uh, this time they said, uh, we honestly have to say, Jacques, you have a great Le Pain in your hands for, for this year. So uh, I'm, very, I'm very glad with that. So I think that, it's a vintage that suits Le Pain. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So don't, don't ask me why. The, the, yeah. I, don't, I don't have a response. Why, why, Jacques? Why? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. it's so, yeah, so imprevisible, imprevisible. Uh, when you make the wine, you already know. Unpredictable. Unpredictable, indeed. When you make the wine, when you see the, when you see the grape, you taste the grapes. Uh, you already can say the, the juice, it's a fine, good skin, and everything. But it's it's almost a miracle uh, to have to achieve uh, from grape juice. Uh, you know, you taste normal grape, grape juice. Uh, uh, you buy in uh, grape juice in supermarkets or something, and then it becomes wine. It's uh, it's kind of a miracle. So, uh, yeah. like I say, Fiona is uh, fond of uh, Bill Viola. You know, this uh, artist who makes uh, video videos video. and uh, and he creates as well. He, uh, he takes pages of the Bible and uh, to creation and everything. I think you should make something about creation of wine uh, from the grapes to the, the, the growing of the gra of the, the vines, the grapes, and then making the wine, everything. It's uh, something, something sublime that uh, achieves uh, the nature. And of course, now you have three wines that you make. You have Le Pain. And now we are making uh, three wines. So I'm most busy with Le Pain during the harvest and then checking the wine making at uh, Leaf in uh, saint Emilion, And then I share another vineyard in the Côte de Castillon called uh, Lettre, a vineyard that I share with my sister, my dear sister, and that I love, and our, ch and our children too. So, uh, and there we, there we work organic, because it used to be organic, and we are going to try to, we try to keep it organic, we will try to keep, keep it organic. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what LIF was in uh, work in progress, now I think it's in progress, and uh, we, uh, we're, we're almost there. We're almost there. The young vines begin to produce, and 
we are happy with the results we have there. And there's the son of uh, Nicolas Tiampon, who takes care about uh, Fabio Maca, Figaro, and so on. Uh, Cyril, who takes care about uh, um, op, op, uh, op, uh, used to be a part of Leaf. And in uh, Lettre, it's a son of my brother, my godson, uh, Maxime, who takes care about Lettre. So uh, we uh, involved uh, all the members from the family champion to uh, we trust them. I think they make uh, they make a very good job. Yeah, no, very. I mean, I've been very impressed with the leaf um, from from the beginning. I think it's uh, yes, yes, mm -hmm. been a very impressive wine. So, yeah, but unexpected for me that uh, already the result is uh, satisfying. Yeah, never yeah. good, never good enough, of course, but it's still good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you must be just a sort of kind of wrap things up. I mean, you must be very proud looking back at from where you've come from in the beginning when nobody, you created a wine yeah. didn't exist. And then mm -hmm. now it's one of the most sort of famous wines in the world. Yes, you must look back and feel very proud what you've achieved. I'm very happy with that. But the problem is uh, you have to know to, because everybody looks to you, so don't make a mistake. Otherwise they, they point with your finger to you. <laughs> So that's you feel lots of pressure, do you? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a problem too. Huh? To, to keep to keep the reputation, that's uh, not uh, evident. Yeah. Well, I, I guess the problem is you have to keep the reputation. But the we, we, uh, we have a good a good tandem, and uh, together with Alexander Guillaume, we have a good tandem to uh, to make the wine and to keep our feet on the floor and uh, that uh, to continue. Don't take the ourselves same. too seriously. No, no, no. We, uh, yeah, yeah. So and yeah, I, give, think, I think with, for the next generation, we give uh, a good uh, tools to so they can work later. And yeah. uh, I think that we'll be proud to continue the same uh, mission. But the, talking of the next generation, are your sons, they have a big interest in wine? One, William, you said, is an architect. And George, yeah, uh, we're uh, studying architect and engineer and uh, George st studying uh, law. But uh, uh, you know, their, their spirit is going to the... Uh, to the vines and to the wine. I think uh, they, I, we told them you have to do first what you like to do and you don't go in the wine or the wine trade before seven or eight years, make experiments everywhere, uh, elsewhere, and then you can come in the, in the family. Otherwise, you come with blank, blankets, you say, uh, blankets? Blinkers. Blinkers or blankets. Yeah. And uh, now we come with an upper open mind to have a broader uh, view in the market and that's more important. So, yeah, it's uh, interesting. Yeah. Every, everyone said the same thing that it's important that their children yeah. pursue a, a different different career and then go back to wine with an open mind and as we are a little bit older uh, the good uh, uh, thing is that we have cousins and uh, nephews uh, that in the work in between two generations to uh, i said to the, to the cousins what i do with you i hope we'll do it with our children so uh you have to continue the transition yeah 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 well jack and fiona thank you very much for uh, speaking, speaking to us for the last hour. It's been, I thought I thought I knew everything about La Pan, but I I don't. So uh, you learned some, something new. Always learning something new. Always, <laughs> always, always. Well, uh, tasting this lovely uh, tooth. It's it's interesting. The eleven. It's like opening, and I can smell the troubles and the, the mocha coming out much now. So I'm going to drink it. Drink it you, thank, thank you very much thank for you. this conversation, and uh, enjoy your wine this evening with your friends. I will do. It's going, it's going to a, a very good friend in our first post-lockdown social distance back of the garden dinner. So I think it's an uh, appropriate wine to, to sort of celebrate a little bit of freedom. Thank, so thank, you, very thank you very much. much. Thank you. 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 Thank you